Okay, YouTube friends, so I meant to do this video like a couple weeks ago. I got a request for a better video about my sawmill shed. Um, but it was deer season and elk season, and I thought I could squeeze it in, and I just couldn't. So here's my sawmill shed. So I guess we'll start off with what the sawmill's sitting on. So that's some six by sixes that are all buried about <clears throat> a little over two foot in the ground and then trimmed off um, the height I picked was kind of on purpose you know I got equipment to load it but I wanted something that was a comfortable work height for me so I set it at that height um, and then it's got the full length of it um, the one trick I've done with building fences before is the posts are in a garbage sack what I did is I soaked the posts in used motor oil and then a garbage sack did the same thing on the post for the sawmill shed itself um, I actually on that I even drilled these little holes right here um, you can see one right there at an angle I need to make some stoppers for them so you can you know once or twice a year top them off with motor oil but since they have the garbage sack duct tape to them it shouldn't leach into the ground at all so on the shed itself, there's definitely different ways you could do this, and it uh, depend on your availability of logs, obviously, but also kind of somewhat what you mill. So uh, most of what I mill is eight foot or six foot. I mill a lot of six foot, occasionally some ten. Uh, real uncommon for me to do sixteen foot. So what I have here is I milled up a bunch of sixteen foot stock. So uh, the front here is a 16 foot six by six buried three foot in the ground and then there's a 16 foot six by six across there which you can see there's a little bit of a just a real small overhang here so the actual opening is uh, just just over 15 foot and then this fills out I think it's 23 feet overall so it covers the whole mill um, I added these six by six bracing up there, but this gives me a nice 13 or just under 13 foot opening in the front here. So perhaps a better way to do this would be one of two ways. Now I could always pick my head up and mill the other way. It's not a big deal, you know, spin the head around, but you could uh, have added this short section here. What I originally thought about doing was a short section with another post right here kind of kind of split this opening here so you had like 16 in the middle but for the rare occasions that I do 16 foot I can load them at an angle but you know and you can also you could have done the trick of cut it and then spin the log around and or slide it back or whatever and, and try and mill something longer in your mill set up to do but uh, for me this is going to work it'll be a straight load on 90 percent of what I load up so with that being said these are also 16 foot um, so the the gap here actually just forgot it so let me measure the overall width It amounted to 10 foot eight is the width of this. So then we can see the other thing I did here is those are two foot centers. So came out, so two, four, six. Then I placed a, a six by six up there. And then uh, two more and a six by six, two more two by sixes and a six by six. And then uh, it actually goes out past this wall the roof does on this end just a little bit um, just the easiest way to get these little half walls so what I th then did is I tied up some straps and I laid those on top of the two six by six so as you've probably seen in my previous video I have this electric winch with the car battery right there and it loaded this log no problem you can use it to roll logs if I ever whenever I have to service like the wheels I can lift the head up all of that stuff with it so I wanted the six by sixes up there for that um, and then I clad the whole roof in 
one inch cedar because I get an abundance of cedar and this tin was given to me for free um, but it was previously on a barn so you know you got to try and plug the previous holes and all of that so I figured hey I'll just mill up a bunch of one inch which also makes your roof much sturdier um, so it's all one inch up there and then you lay the tin down and if there was a screw there before you put a screw in it so it works works pretty slick for that um, and then I added some four by sixes up there just for you know the bird's mouth notched a little bit of the the uh, board out up there so extra support um, these are all that's held in with they're all held in with lag bolts the the supports and that um, there's lag bolts that go down through the top six by six into the post and then I also took these uh, two by sixes and just screwed them on just I didn't feel like spending a bunch of money on brackets for my sawmill shed you know and I got similar here I added uh, I had to space out a couple of these because uh, I had one of uh, one of these six by sixes. It was only five and a half, but I wanted to use it. But then this post is screwed into the all along the top of that that four by six and into the beams. These end walls I noticed after I built it. Um, pretty much all of our weather comes in from this direction. Um, some of it comes in from here so we're backed up against the cascades range here and uh, most of our weather comes off the coast which is you know that direction which is west but occasionally we get east so it would blow in quite a ways so i picked this height because i can easily walk under it and it starts off at six foot and tapers down so i just added the two by six as you see in there and then just had my angle figured out and just took a bunch of scrap one inch boards put them up there and uh, then just screwed them down then went along and cut the bottom off and then this is up against the fence with my neighbors so what I did back here is I put a little five foot wall uh, primarily it's just to stop from sharing my sawdust with them so all in all I'm really happy with it uh, if there's any further detail questions let me know and I can get back to you I suppose the other one is I got a pretty aggressive drop so it's we're looking at 13 feet post height there on the front and on the back We're eight and a half feet, so you yeah, know that's a it's a pretty steep roof, but I want it to shed the snow. So that that was kind of my plan with that is uh, set it all up so I don't ever have to scrape this roof. You know, and honestly, even when I haven't been milling, we found it kind of nice this summer. You know, if you if I spin you around here, we got some lumber over there, but like we got the kids trampoline. Got the kids swing set. I got a little play kitchen out of an old cooktop there. And it made kind of a nice little shady spot to sit. So all in all, we've liked it and we've used it quite a bit and really happy with it. I am curious to see down here if I end up having to uh, keep having to level this. I haven't had this base for real long. And as the seasons change, like, stayed dry for a long time I had to relevel the sawmill I'm curious to see how much moisture it sucks up this w winter if it swells and I have to resell uh, relevel it or not um, I'm sure there was also some settling as far as you compact the post the best you can but you know you put a bunch of smaller logs and you put a big fat one like this and something's gonna settle so we'll see how it all settles out but ultimately if I have to spend half an hour or an hour twice a year to re-level the sawmill i'm i'm okay with that especially when i didn't have to uh buy a bunch of concrete or anything because being in here undercover these should last a long time and if they rot off gee i don't know where i could possibly come up with more six by sixes because that's the beauty of uh owning your own mill is 
you know, you need some lumber, you cut some lumber. So, uh, okay. Well, hopefully this uh, answered any questions out there.